Mesopotamian Sargon, Hammurabi, Asher, Bonapal, and Gilgamesh Were the Mesopotamian Sargon, Sargon, Hammurabi, Asher, Hello my awesome students, today we are talking about Mesopotamia. Well, we're starting to talk about Mesopotamia and we're going to learn about three things. We're going to learn about the environmental factors that influence where people choose to live. We're going to talk about the geography of an area of the world that's called the Fertile Crescent. It's in Southwest Asia uh, and we'll talk about that. And third, we're going to talk about how civilization actually started in the area that we call today Mesopotamia. But first, let's talk about how people choose where they want to settle. And there are really four environmental factors that influence where people choose to live. And the first environmental factor that in, has an influence on where people choose to live is water. Uh, water is used uh, for drinking, so you need fresh water to drink, um, but it's also used uh, as a food source um, in the form of fish. Uh, and the last thing people use water for is transportation. Um, before cars and trucks and even the wheel, people were able to use rivers as uh, ancient highways to get from place to place. So because people needed a, a, a water source, they tended to live near rivers or other fresh water sources. The next environmental factor that influences where people choose to settle um, are minerals. Minerals are natural substances found in the earth and people use minerals for building tools. Uh, some of these minerals are things like copper and bronze. Uh, the mineral you see in front of you here on the screen is a mineral called obsidian. It's a volcanic mineral. Um, and it was used in ancient Mesopotamia especially. It was very, very important um, because they were able to create very sharp tools with obsidian because they could grind down the edges and make them very sharp so they could make spearheads and knives and axes out of obsidian that were very sharp. Um, and so a lot of people traded for obsidian. So uh, minerals are typically found in mountains, so people tend to live where there's access to the mountains. So we've got water, we've got minerals. The third environmental factor that influence where people uh, choose to live is vegetation. Vegetation uh, is a fancy word for plants. Um, people use vegetation for a couple of things. Uh, vegetation is used, of course, for food. Uh, but you also need vegetation in the form of trees uh, for lumber. Um, people use lumber as a building material. Uh, for vegetation, uh, you need a mild climate. Uh, a climate that's not too hot, not too cold. Uh, a climate that there's not too much rain uh, or not enough rain. Uh, you need something just right in the middle uh, for plants to grow well. So we've got water, we've got minerals, we've got vegetation. And the last environmental factor that people think about uh, when they're choosing a place to settle is topography. Now that's a fancy word. Uh, topography uh, simply means the shape of the land. So in this picture here you can see several different topographies. You can see uh, mountainous areas here, you've got some hillsides here. Uh, but the topography people tend to like when they're thinking about a place to live is this one right here, this nice flat land. People tend to need flat land for farming, um, and that land also needs to have a good fertile soil um, for, their, uh, for their crops. So when, when thinking about topography, people tend to settle in flat fertile areas. So to review those four environmental factors that influence where people choose or chose to live, um, we've got water, people need fresh water, uh, minerals for making tools, uh, vegetation for eating and building, and uh, flat fertile land in um, when they're thinking about topography. And there's one part of the world that seems to have had all of these things. Uh, 
and that was in the Middle East, an area that you might also call Southwest Asia. Uh, and if we zoom in here on uh, this area of the world, you can see uh, countries that you see in the news all the time right now. You got the country of Iraq, uh, Syria, uh, Israel, Jordan, and this area is oftentimes called the Fertile Crescent. Now, if we look at why it would be called the Fertile Crescent, it's this area right here, and then it kind of dips down here, and then up and back around. So it's a crescent, um, and it's very fertile, meaning that it's really easy um, to grow crops here. Um, in this area of the world, it's called the Fertile Crescent, and it's really the area of the world that saw the first civilizations. So if we get rid of the current countries and take a look at it, what it looked like, or uh, the, the physical geography of the area, you see a couple of things. First of all, you see these two major rivers. You see the Tigris River here and the Euphrates River here. And this area in the center is, uh, this area here is known as Mesopotamia. Uh, Mesopotamia is a Greek word and it literally means between the rivers. So Mesopotamia is the area between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. And the, the area inside of this was very, very good for farming. Now, if you look to the north of Mesopotamia, you'll see a mountain range called the Zargos Mountains. Uh, to the south of Mesopotamia was uh, the Syrian Desert. To the west of Mesopotamia, you had the Mediterranean Sea. And to the east of Mesopotamia, you've got the Persian Gulf. And that's kind of what the area looks like. So the reason Mesopotamia is a very important area uh, in, in history is it is the area that sees the world's first civilizations. And the way those civilizations develop should be pretty familiar to you now that we've looked at uh, the uh, agricultural revolution. So in Mesopotamia, people started by settling near uh, water. And the reason they settled near water is because they, well, they needed it to drink, but they also needed it to uh, plant their crops. Now, the one downfall to settling near either the Tigris or Euphrates rivers is they're very unpredictable. They have a tendency to dry out when there's not enough rain. They also have a tendency to overflow and flood, which means that your village um, uh, gets destroyed. So because the uh, Tigris and Euphrates rivers were very unpredictable, people looked for ways to control the water. Uh, if you remember our word irrigation, that means, you know, moving water from place to place. And Mesopotamians became very good at controlling the water um, through the process of irrigation. And because they were so good at irrigation, um, they were able to improve their farming and create a food surplus. And if you remember back to the agricultural revolution, once you've got a food surplus, once one person is able to grow food for multiple families, um, that opens up uh, other people for doing other jobs, um, which leads to what we called a division of labor. So different people doing different jobs. You had people creating pottery, people weaving, people who were in charge of trading with other civilizations. So uh, that's kind of how civilization started in Mesopotamia. Were you paying attention? Answer the next couple of questions to find out. What are the four factors that influenced where people chose to settle? What geographic features bordered Mesopotamia? Why did people in Mesopotamia need to find ways to control the water? <laughs>